You know, one of the things that people mistakenly believe is that dogs and cats are actually supposed to be afraid when they're at the vet's office. It's a catastrophic error, and it's an error that can cause dogs and cats to never recover. When you've got a young pup or a kitten, you've got an animal that's 8 to 12 weeks of age, the cortices of their brain are, for all intents and purposes, still developing. If you scare that animal, you actually can set in motion a chain of neurochemical events that do damage to how they can learn. And I think that anybody who's ever been really badly scared by something remembers that they knew what it felt like and they knew how awful that was and they may not be able to articulate it but it's there forever and part of the reason it's there forever is your amygdala is pre-adapted to have that happen. Um, knowing about adaptive fear, being able to learn adaptive fear keeps you alive. You know, it would be foolish if you put your hand in fire. Most of us don't actually try to go run and play in traffic. But we don't see that same reaction happening in a veterinary clinic. <coughs> Excuse me. And if we see a puppy who you go to examine and three people are now having to hold this dog down, stop. You're done. It's over. He's already past the limit. Equally, a puppy that everybody thinks is well behaved, who is just sitting there, and if you look at them, they're shaking and vibrating and they might be salivating, they might be staring off into space. Stop! They're over threshold. Everything you do is going to make this work. There is nothing that's an emergency for this animal. And it's even worse for kittens because people assume that kittens don't do well in veterinary clinics anyway, which is really incredibly foolish because if you bring in a cat at a young age, this is the age where you can get a feather toy and they'll jump and they'll run and they'll play and they'll jump on the cupboard and they'll jump on the exam table. And I use those times to teach animals to jump up on something so that they're easy to examine. Jump up on the table, jump up for the feather toy. A kitten jumping up for the feather toy, you just got to look at its belly. You know, a puppy who can give you a high five, you get to check one armpit. High five, you get to check the other armpit. Sitting bears, you get to check the belly. Standing bears, you get to check the inguinal area. You never had to touch the animal. These are the time periods when they're pre-adapted to having fun. Playing is about learning how to make mistakes successfully. And we don't take advantage of that in these clinics. Instead, we subject these animals to these manipulations that they find scary, whether or not they tell us that they're scaring them. And people don't realize that we may be doing irreversible harm. And I do mean irreversible. Can you get them over it? Yes. It can be very difficult, and depending on some genotypes or depending on some personality types, it's going to be much harder for some cats and dogs than others. We're certainly doing needless harm. 